a plantation of poplars, the petrol of the future? Well, that's what we're here to find out. This week, Environment is looking at innovative energy. Hello and welcome. Coming up in this week's show, French researchers try to identify the sweetest of trees with the high sugar content to produce a fruitful harvest of biodiesel. Meanwhile, in Spain, CO2 from a cement factory is sucked up by algae, leading to the mass production of biopetroleum. And finally, going electric. How green are the latest shiny engines to hit the road? They steer clear of polluting petrol, but nonetheless depend on power plants, many still fueled by coal, to run smoothly. We'll be looking at all this and more, but first here's some other news in brief. China's hydropower has won permission to build a cascade of dams across a World Heritage Site, home to 80 different endangered species. Constructed along the New River, it is expected to generate the same amount of power as the Three Gorges Dam. Less than one-third of biofuel used on UK roads meets governmental environmental standards. According to a new report, almost 70% of providers don't know the origin of their fuel or if it was produced in a sustainable way. The majority of biofuel in the UK is imported, and NGOs say its production is a major culprit in the destruction of the rainforest. Oh, we start here in this outdoor laboratory near Orléans in France. The aim here is to find the type of tree most suitable to the production of biofuels. One that can grow on land unsuitable for agriculture and so not compete with our food supplies. The question being posed here is can the poplar become a source of sustainable energy? Well, let's find out. A field of potential petrol, 2,700 different forms of the same tree, each with minor changes, crossbreeding, genetic modifications. These poplars are like lab rats in an experiment to find the tree that can yield the most green energy. We are looking for the perfect tree. And we'll only find it by comparing various properties, such as the wood quality, the quantity of cellulose. We are looking for a tree that has high levels of both of these traits. The poplar was picked for its natural ability to grow fast, spurting an average of 15 feet a year. What's more, it's hardy enough to grow almost anywhere, and in tough conditions. Here, researchers have pulled its trunk away from the direction of the sun, forcing the tree to push and strain to regain the line of the light. It's a trial that has led it to create a type of wood of particular interest to researchers. The tension wood's particular in that it has one very thick layer, a layer that's almost exclusively cellulose. From cellulose we can make glucose and you can ferment this into ethanol, which can be used in biofuels. And while the French continue their experiments, across in Germany, the world's first bioethanol factory is expected to be up and running before the end of the year. The poplar and the willow will be the basis of sun diesel being produced here. Boat trees are, for now at least, going to be taken in their natural form. And at that, the factory expects to be able to produce a maximum of 18 million litres a year. That's just enough to fill 15,000 cars. Well, from the tree, we turn to algae. For years already, scores of companies and laboratories around the world have been looking for ways of turning seaweed into a source of green energy. Well, we're about to meet a man who has taken the idea out of the laboratory. Across in Alicante, a factory producing seaweed-based petrol is now up and running. The next industrial revolution may be underway in this ecological petrol factory. This plant accelerates the natural process by which fossil fuels are made. These tubes contain the raw materials, phytoplankton and recycled carbon dioxide. This piping allows us to transport the gases rejected by the cement factory next to us. These tubes then go underground to a compression room. That's where we mix the CO2 with the air, which feeds the microalgae. Then in these transparent tubes, the plankton flourish on the simple natural procedure of photosynthesis. 
when a certain concentration of this biomass is achieved, it's the turn of the scientists to step in. They extract part of the biomass from the tubes and treat it in several stages. We filter the biomass here. That allows us to remove more than 99% of the water. That means we have a very pure water on one hand and on the other a concentrate. It's this concentrate that's treated to make a 21% solid material. This concentrate is then subjected to a very high temperature and pressure. That transforms a green and sticky mass into this material, petrol, which can fuel cars and planes, as demonstrated here. We can use this petrol in a motor or burner like the one here, which runs on fuel number two. This biofuel emits half as much carbon dioxide as is used during its production. Its inventors say you would only need enough tubes of plankton to fill a land surface six times the size of Sardinia to produce the petrol consumed every day on the whole planet. Well, finally, can you imagine the petrol pump being replaced by a battery swapping station? Well, that is the vision of advocates of the electric car. Manufacturers are putting more and more of them on the market every year. But we're about to take a test drive in one of the latest models now to see exactly how green these machines really are. Welcome to Linfen in China's Shanxi province and the most polluted city in the world. This huge industrial center is home to hundreds of thousands of petrol guzzling vehicles. Little wonder electric cars are a growing market here. But are they really the solution to cleaner transport? As in China, many French people are also seduced by the apparent efficiency of these automobiles. Today's electric cars, in terms of the environment and CO2 emissions, are the most efficient. There are no emissions. Not strictly true. While exhaust emissions are zero, electric cars still need to be recharged. The cars are powered by electricity. This electricity is supplied either by highly polluting power stations or by nuclear plants, where we still haven't solved the problem of waste disposal. More than 80 percent of the world's electricity comes from power stations that burn fossil fuels. The average petrol car gives off 161 grams of carbon dioxide every kilometre. An electric car in China needs 253 grams of CO2 to cover the same distance. In France, the figure is just 21 grams thanks to nuclear energy. There is something else to watch out for, though. Electric cars should be plugged in during periods of low consumption, such as in the night, to avoid a drain on the network. No doubt these vehicles can compete with the most efficient of petrol cars. Are they the future? Well, France expects to have four million of them on the road within 15 years. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's show. Have a good week and I'll see you again next time.